So if you ever wanted to add an outdoor receptacle, but you don't really know where to start or you don't really know what to look out for, well, in this video, I'm gonna go over some of those basics as to how those are installed. And in this case, I'm gonna go over some of the biggest mistakes that are made when installing those outdoor receptacles. And I have a perfect example here with this house where this receptacle was installed with numerous issues. I'll go over what each one of those are, how they should be properly installed, and how we can go about correcting all of those issues. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here is my outdoor receptacle, and there are actually quite a few issues that are going on with this. Some of them you're gonna be able to see just from looking at it from the outside, and some we're gonna have to wait until we get into them. They're a little bit more internal to show you some of these huge mistakes that are made when these get installed. But as some of you might have noticed, if you look inside through this clear plastic here, that is just a standard receptacle. So if I go ahead and open it up to get a better view, as you can see, that is just a standard 20 amp receptacle. And if you don't know already, the reason we know that it's a 20 amp receptacle is you see that horizontal line over there to the left. That is to allow for a 20 amp plug to be installed into this receptacle. And this is on a 20 amp circuit with 20 amp circuit breaker. But because this is an outdoor receptacle, it is required to be GFCI protected. And there's numerous ways that that can be done. But in this case, this is the first receptacle in line. It does not have a GFCI circuit breaker on it. Obviously this is not a GFCI receptacle. And so this would be against code and a very serious shock or electrocution hazard. And this goes for any receptacle that is in a wet location, whether that's outside, a basement, a garage, they all have to be GFCI protected. So just starting out with our biggest mistakes in this video, it comes down to not having proper GFCI protection on your outdoor receptacles and outlets. But here's the good news. This can be very easily corrected doesn't take a whole lot of time and also doesn't cost a whole lot of money. But first things first, before we do anything with this receptacle or work on anything that has to do with the circuit, we wanna make sure that we turn the circuit breaker off that is supplying the power to this receptacle. Then once that power is off, I can take an outlet tester like this, power it on, plug it into each one of the plugs here and just verify that we are not getting any voltage on this receptacle whatsoever. If we were getting any kind of voltage detected here, we would have one of these two lights illuminating. And then on this particular digital screen, it would also be showing us what the voltage is. But now we verified that there is in fact no power going to this receptacle, so we can start working on it. So what I'll start out by doing is removing these two screws, one on the top, one on the bottom, and that will remove our front cover here. And even though I verified with the outlet tester that there is no power going here, I like to be extra careful once I get the cover off. In this case, I'll just take this non-contact voltage detector and just go along the sides to make sure it's also not sensing any voltage. You can either use this or a multimeter or an actual voltage detector, but by using these two tools to confirm that the power is off, we will in fact know whether or not there is any power there or not. And of course, like always for your convenience, any of the tools and materials you see in this video, if you're interested in checking them out, getting more details on it or picking one up for yourself, I'll have links for everything down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check it all out for yourself. All right, so now that I'm pulling this out, I'm recognizing that I'm seeing another issue and mistake that was done when installing this, and I'll get into that in just a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew each of the screws on both sides to release the wires from that receptacle so that I can then remove it from the box. Okay, now that I've removed this, there's actually more than one issue inside of this box that I was not aware of before removing this. All right, so we're gonna cover each one of these mistakes one by one. All right, so first off, you can see my wires that are coming in, so the line side, and then down here at the bottom are my wires that are then going on to the load side. I'm gonna let you look at this for just a moment and see if you can spot what the first of two issues is. Yeah, so if you notice that these wires are way too short, you would be correct. Your wires have got to be at least six inches long for where they enter the box, and then you take your measurement from there and make sure the wires are at least six inches long. So more than likely what happened here is, I don't know if you can tell the size of these wires, but these look to be about 10 gauge wire. And I'm 
Guessing the reason that 10 gauge wire was used here is because of the load that goes past this receptacle. It's quite a long distance and so voltage drop was being taken into account which in that case was actually the correct thing to do to account for that voltage drop. But because this looks to be 10 gauge wire, these wires can be extremely difficult to work with. They're very rigid. And if you've got a bunch of extra wire in a box, you gotta fit it in behind a receptacle, it can really be a difficult job to do. Regardless, code is code and it requires six inches from where it enters in out and then you also need to have at least three inches of wire sticking out past the face of that particular receptacle box whereas typically on a 20 amp receptacle when you open it up you should find 12 gauge wire that's being connected to it now what can we do in order to fix this well there's some very easy methods in order to do this and it's also going to allow for what we're going to be working on to not be as difficult to work with as far as these wires go well how can you go about doing that well it's actually very easy to do you just need some scrap wire and make what are called pigtails this is a pigtail i've got these cut to six inches i've got my leads exposed and i easily made this up using some leftover wire and typically you can connect those pigtails in order to lengthen them a couple of different ways. These are a couple of different splicing devices that are often used for doing this job. Of course, we got the wire nut on the right, and then this is a WAGO inline connector over here on the left. Or maybe you'd be more familiar with the standard WAGO connector. Wire nuts will vary in size as far as wire size and how many can go underneath of it. So you'll want to make sure that you get the proper wire nut for your particular job. And your WAGO connectors, a lot of them only go up to 12 gauge wire. However, they do make 10 gauge wire options, not in the inline connector, but in the standard WAGO connector. But it's always important to make sure that you're using the proper splicing device for the job as well. The good thing is 12 gauge wire is rated for 20 amps. So again, this is what I will be using to demonstrate for this video. So this is just as easy as taking the pigtail, taking whatever splicing connector you've decided to use. I've been using a decent amount of Wagos in my videos lately. They work really, really well, but I'm gonna change it up. And for those of you that prefer to use wire nuts, we're gonna use wire nuts. So for each one of my wires I'm gonna be working on, I want to take my pigtail, put it up next to the wire. I, of course, want to use white neutral wires on white neutral and black hot wires on the black hot wires. And then we'll also get to the ground. We only want to use grounds there. So I just want to go ahead, put my wire nut in on top of those two wires and then really tighten them down to where I really can't tighten it a whole lot further. All right, so per the manufacturer, this wire nut is now installed properly. I oftentimes prefer to pre-twist, but for the sake of the length of this video, I'm just gonna hand twist, which per the instructions is perfectly okay. Once I've got that on, all I have to do is push it into the back of my box. And now I have a code compliant wire that is at least six inches long and extends out past the face of the box at least three inches. And then I would just repeat the process for each of my remaining wires. Again, I wanna keep connecting my white neutral to white neutral, black hots to black hots. And then of course the grounds, I just wanna connect bare copper wire to bare copper wire. All right, so before I put my pigtail on these ground wires, this is where the next big mistake I spotted once I took that receptacle out comes into play. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but there was no ground pigtail. That outlet or receptacle was not grounded in any way. These two ground wires were just twisted together like so and just sat in the back of the box. There wasn't even a wire nut on top. So just really wanted to quickly cover that, that you just never know what you're gonna find. In this case, there should have been a ground pigtail connected to ground that receptacle. And on top of that, there needed to be a splicing device on those grounds. So we're gonna go ahead and correct that now, just by doing the exact same thing we did on the black and white wires. All right, so now that all of our wires are lengthened, we've corrected that issue. Now is when you would want to install your GFCI receptacle. Now, I'm not gonna go step by step on how this is installed, because that's not really what this video is about. Just some very basic things about these. In this case, this is going outside. I prefer to use a weather resistant GFCI, which you can see WR on the receptacle itself. The biggest thing is just knowing which side the black or hot wire goes on. It'll say hot or it'll say white wire for each side. And then you'll have a line, which is your hot wire that's coming in. And then once we remove this sticker down here, this is where the load will go. And so very self-explanatory. I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this up really quickly for purposes of saving time in this video. 
Now, one just really quick tip while I am installing these is anytime I'm installing a receptacle or a light switch, I like to know exactly which wires are which, whether they're my line or my load. So in this case, my line wire is coming in from the top. I've got that black and white wire separated up towards the top and my loads are the ones on the bottom. So I have those separated, the white and the black down at the bottom of the box. This just makes everything a little bit more organized and especially when we're installing a GFCI where it does matter where each wire goes, it's always best to have things organized as you are installing devices as well. All right, so now that all my wires are placed, everything's pushed into the back of the box. Before I put the cover on, something that's important is if you flip it over here to the back, if you remember, we had that standard receptacle. So that's what this is right here. This piece needs to come out like so, and it needs to be replaced with this piece here, which is a hole for a GFCI or a Decora switch, and it'll just pop into place just like so. Then I can take that cover, take my screws, insert them through the cover into the top and the bottom holes of the receptacle. Then once those are lined up, I line them up with my holes that are in the box itself, and I just tighten everything down. Again, this is going to not only tighten down the cover, but it's also gonna tighten down the receptacle itself. So we wanna make sure that it's down nice and tight. So then once that's all tightened down, everything's in place. Now it's time to go ahead and turn the circuit breaker back on that is going to this receptacle. But now I wanna test this GFCI and make sure everything was wired up correctly. And I also wanna run a test with using this GFCI tester in order to make sure that it will trip in the event of a ground fault. So I'll go ahead and power it on. Go ahead, plug it in. And as you can see on our tester, we're getting a green light illuminated, which says correct. If we look up here on top at the screen, You'll see we're also getting 122, 123 volts, which is perfect. And it says that everything is wired up correctly. Now I'll go ahead and pull it out of the bottom one, insert it into this top one, and it should read exactly the same. Green light, 122, 123 volts, and reading that everything is installed correctly. I'll just go ahead, push this test button on my outlet tester, and that's gonna simulate a ground fault, which is gonna cause the GFCI to trip. So I'll go ahead and push it now. As you can see, it tripped the GFCI, showing that it did it in 0.06 seconds, so that is very good. Now I'll just go ahead and reset the GFCI, and everything is back up and operating correctly again. All right, so just to really quickly recap what we've done so far, we fixed the biggest issue out of all the ones I'm gonna show you, which is replacing that standard receptacle with a GFCI. Now we have GFCI protection. We discovered with that other receptacle, it did not have a ground wire connected to it, so it wasn't even grounded. We fixed that. So that's a big mistake that might be missed by some. And then we also lengthened the wires inside of the box which were way, way, way too short. So we've gone over a few of some of the biggest and most common mistakes that come up when people install these outdoor receptacles. One other one that I just wanna quickly point out to you that can come into play very easily is depending on what box, a lot of times your outdoor boxes are gonna be made of metal. And as you saw, we didn't bond anything to this box. The reason for that is because this particular box is a plastic box. It doesn't need to be bonded. There are certain plastic boxes out there that are designed for outdoor use, but I'm just letting you know that a lot of your outdoor receptacle boxes are going to be metal. And if they're metal, there's gonna be a green ground screw in the back of that box where when we were doing our pigtails, a ground wire would need to be bonded to the box as well. That way, in the event of a ground fall and say this didn't work for whatever reason, it doesn't energize the box and just by touching it would cause a shock or electrocution. So that's another very common mistake that a lot of people make when they're installing metal electrical boxes is they do not bond the box as well. All right, so we've taken care of the receptacle. Is there anything else you can see that is going on here that needs to be done? So yeah, I don't know how many of you recognized it. We have this PVC conduit that our wiring is running in, and I'm gonna show you really quickly how easy this is to just fix and get it done right, is while our box Box, we have four screws there's two on this side two on the other side while our box is anchored to the wall our PVC is not now this is a very short run to where there's not a whole lot that would probably happen in the event that this gets pulled on so that it's tapped into is mounted and again very short run however there needs to be a conduit clamp even on this short run up here at the top and there probably needs to also be one down at the bottom that way it brings everything into code compliance and it also takes away the off chance that for some reason this would get pulled on really hard 
and just rip it away from all of our connections here. Definitely don't want that. Don't want any live wires. So this is super easy to install. I'm just going to take that clamp, slide it over my PVC like so, and then I'm going to take some screws. I'm going to put a screw in each side of that clamp, and it's going to tighten it down nice and tight to the wall. All right, so now that is nice and tight clamped to the wall. There is no chance that that's going to be pulled away from the wall, cause any type of damage. But this is a step that oftentimes gets completely overlooked, especially by DIYers. And oftentimes their runs are quite a bit longer than what I've got right here. The longer the run, the more important this is going to be. But regardless of how long the run is, you need to be using these clamps when installing these types of conduit just to secure them to the wall to help it not only meet code, but also just for safety purposes. Hey, really quickly before you go, if you found value in this video, then you'll definitely find value in some videos I did in the past that are very much related to what we did here today. One of those videos, I go over some of the biggest mistakes when it comes to installing receptacles, what those mistakes are and how they can be corrected and avoided in the future. I also have another video if you're interested in how I went about installing a receptacle and a light switch in the same box. If those would be of interest to you, all you have to do is click on one of these two videos right over here, whichever one interests you the most, and it'll take you directly to that video. But I hope that you found value in this video, and if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.